Exports remain to be the major driving force of the country's economy, accounting for some 30% of the gross domestic product. It brings much-needed revenues and employment as it showcases Filipino expertise, craftsmanship, and creativity to the world. The impetus came 25 years ago when the Export Development Act, or RA-7844, was approved by then-President Fidel V. Ramos on December 21, 1994. Export development was one of the change pin of uh, our strategic roadmap called Philippines 2000. During my administration, the office of the president supported almost all of the reforms needed to make the Philippines a competitive exporting nation. This ranged from the dismantling of the uh, monopoly on telecommunications to passing the social economic reforms that went to Congress. We remember, signing the Export Development Act of 1994, which was quickly followed by the Back Liberalization Law, the Retail Trade Liberalization Act, the Mining Act, and the E-Commerce Law. All of this were done with the end goal of leveling the playing field, as we recognize that competitiveness made to rapid modernization and sustained growth. It was another export advocate, then-senator and former president, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, who led the crafting of the law with support from congressmen such as Juni Cua, Margarito Tevez, and Felicito Payumo. We need to continue diversifying exports and products. When the Export Development Act was enacted, electronics were our top exports. But electronics and other manufactured products rise and fall with the state of the world economy. In my time, we created BPO and uh, tourism as new engines of growth. Also, we have to address new markets. When the EDA was enacted, the U.S. was our top export market. Now, China is our biggest trading partner. For over these years, they have helped shepherd the industry and have made our export earnings compared to 25 years ago fivefold. Because uh, we need to be competitive. There is a huge market out there and I think export could be the engine of growth of our nation. We must continue to improve the way we do business. We need to reduce our cost. We need to ensure good investment climate. We must continue to promote ease of doing business. And the records will show that since the implementation of the Export Development Act or EDA, the country's performance has grown steadily from 13.5 billion US dollars to 69.3 billion dollars in 2018. A very important strategy and which was also implemented was the Philippine Export Development Plan. The Philippine Export Development Plan or PEDP defines the country's strategies, trust plans and programs. All these contributed to the performance of the export sector and allowed to overcome challenges and to remain resilient over the last 25 years. Industry champions under the Philippine Exporters Confederation Incorporated, or PhilExport, led by President Sergio R. Ortiz Luis Jr., worked with legislators to identify specific programs and incentives that will help push export development and growth. At the time, export was still to be discovered. Uh, our export at the time was uh, basically the traditional items, mining ores, lumber, sugar, the budding industry of the gift toys and houseware, mga handicraft, uh, where, where a lot of uh, uh, exporters were going to, uh, small exporters. And uh, it was a time when we had dollar control. Export was really a welcome idea because it brings us dollars uh, that we need. No? At the time also, export is only a small portion of our GDP. Under that scenario, we are also considered uh, as the basket case of Asia. To help achieve this vision, the law provided for institutional structures and strategies including the following. The Export Development Council is the highest export policy-making body in the country 
composed of eight cabinet-level government officials and nine private sector representatives, nominated by the accredited organization of exporters. It is chaired by the DTI Secretary. The EDC deals on issues affecting experts through consensus and influencing particular agencies to review and align their regulatory policies to facilitate the growth of Philippine exports. However, it has happened that because of specific mandates, approaches to solutions may vary. In such case, the EDC may not have an official position, but the relevant agency may address the issue within its resources and responsibility. It is also healthy that agencies have different opinions, if only to ensure that we appreciate the angles coming from particular sectors or fields that these agencies represent. As such, it may also be that specific agencies are mandated to identify and attend to bottlenecks, constraining the development of experts, including but not limited to such matters as policy framework, physical infrastructure, finance, technology, production, promotion, and marketing, and require the agency or agencies concerned on the actions, initiatives taken to resolve any issue affecting the export sector. The accredited export organization to represent the export sector concerns and interests. So far, Philexport being the only dominant national organization of exporters has served this role. Its president sits as vice chairman of the EDC. The Philippine Export Development Plan, or PEDP, is a rolling three-year plan jointly prepared by the Department of Trade and Industry and private sector stakeholders. It defines a country's annual and medium-term export thrusts, strategies, programs, and projects, and shall be jointly implemented by the government, export, and other concerned sectors. To date, EDC has approved seven PEDPs. The Philippine Trade Center or Complex, which houses the World Trade Center and Trade Promotion Offices, to be located on a land with a long-term government lease to Philexport as the accredited organization. The center is managed by Philexport. Working with partners, interventions by DTI, Philexport, and the EDC have helped Philippine exports break the 10 billion performance in 1993. At 26% growth, this was the best performing globally achieved at the height of and despite the Asian crisis in 1997. Further, we saw an aggregate increase in the number of EDA accredited exporters from 48 in 1995 to 959 in 2018. Such performance has been largely sustained with a few fluctuations in between owing to episodes of reduced global demand. Additionally, there are domestic challenges that the industry continues to struggle with, including weak access to financing and high cost of doing business due to red tape, among other factors. Many of these were addressed through the public-private sector partnership with the EDC through its various networking committees. Many things are working for the Philippine exports to be considered as a reliable and world-class supplier. First is our creative and relatively young pool of skilled workers. This means that we have the best human resource in the world and they are our best advantage. Second, our natural resources also abound with technology helping to make our raw material supply resilient and more price competitive. Third is that the legal and policy framework to make the environment more conducive to doing good business has been institutionalized and continues to evolve and prosper. Finally, we have a strong public-private sector partnership allowing synergies to help address resource constraints from both sides by forging a stronger tie with the addition of the academe as a partner for economic progress, the country is ensured that it will not only produce world-class products but more so of world-class human resource that can aptly deliver the kind of products and goods and services that the world needs from the country. Surviving people has shown the resilience and muscle that has allowed it to perform and survive even in the midst of harsh global economic conditions.